Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So in today's video, I want to talk about Excel's dynamic arrays and how we can use dynamic formulas and dynamic functions to reference multiple cells and multiple values at once and be able to make your analysis a bit more robust and a bit more automated. Let's take a look. Dynamic arrays and dynamic array formulas and dynamic array functions allow us to pretty much reference multiple uh, values, multiple cells at once which allows us to build more robust uh, visualizations and more robust data analysis that auto-updates a bit better and that is easier to work with. Let's look at some examples of what we can do with that. So we have some source data here, some sales reps and some deal amounts for specific dates. So let's say we want to calculate the VAT that's included here. So for VAT, what we can do is we can just multiply this by 0 0.20, 20%. And so this is actually gross sales. And then our gross sales will be this plus this. And then we can copy this down all the way to the bottom. But something else that we can do is we can grab the whole deal amount column and multiply it or 0.2 and we get a spilled formula so you see that there's a slight border that appears and we cannot edit the formula here and if we type in anything here it's gonna break our formula because it's occupying space that's needed for the spilled formula and that's how we get this hash spill error. So as soon as I delete this, it's all here. And we cannot delete any of this. You see, we can delete this value. So this is the source cell from where everything is spilled down. And the great part here, as we're using a table here, and you see we're referencing the whole deal amount column, is that as soon as we add another row here and say 5,000, this is automatically added here. And the same for gross sales, we can just say, grab this thing and add this thing. And you see how this is referenced as E3 hash sign. And this is because it recognizes that this is a spilled formula. So that way it would take this all the way up to wherever the spill ends. So that way it would just match the length of the spilled formula. And if we remove this row from the table, you see that those are now cleared and we can use them. And there's no way to, to use those without causing the same spill error. So that's basically how dynamic formulas work with the spill range. And this is an easy way to ensure that we always have calculations for all the rows that we're adding and uh, things like that. Another thing that uh, we can do is we can use specific dynamic functions. For example, we have the filter function and uh, just grab the whole table, table one, okay? And we can see that our filter criteria is we want this thing to be above our filter up here. And this is gonna filter the whole table, but only show the values that are above 10,000. And we need to format this as a date. And now we can easily update this. And you see that this dynamic function automatically expands the range that it covers to accommodate the new size of the required space here. Bring this back to 10,000. Something else that we can do is we can, for example, wrap the filter uh, in a sort function. And uh, so this is going to be our array. Our sort index is three, the third column, and we want it to be descending. And now our filtered data is sorted by the deal amount. So now let's say want to look at filter uh, at deals above 15,000 and it's gonna filter those as well. Another thing that we can do is summarize data. So for example, we can use the unique function. The unique function is gonna give us, if we uh, go down and uh, select the sales representative, we don't need the buy call and exactly one. So just hit enter and we have the unique sales reps and we can also use the sort function by the first uh, column and we want it to be ascending. So they're sorted in alphabetical order. And then we can grab the average deal size and this is going to be average if and our range is going to be 
this range, our criteria is going to be this here, and our average range is going to be this over here. And you see that once again, because we're selecting the result of a dynamic function, it recognizes this as a spill function, so it uses the L3 hash instead of L3 to L7. Let's see if that works. Okay, average deal size. Let's look at Emily Johnson, just to make sure that this is calculating correctly. So for Emily Johnson, we have this plus this deal, plus this deal, plus this deal, 45,000, and this is four deals. Divide that over four, and we get the 11,475. And that's how you can use dynamic arrays, and that's how the concept of spilling works in Excel, and how you can utilize functions, specifically dynamic array functions, that would allow you to have more versatility and ensure that whenever new data is added to your table, all the summary tables, all the calculations and analysis automatically include that and automatically adjust to include this additional date. Those were a few examples on how you can use dynamic arrays, the spill functionality within Excel, and also some of the dynamic array functions that are embedded within Excel and how you can use those to uh, add a bit more robustness and a bit more automation within your analysis. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to do a more advanced tutorial on how to use uh, these functions in some maybe real world scenarios. So yeah, give me ideas down below. Thank you guys for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.